Hi everyone! Welcome to Artsonia's After School Art Club. Today we have a fun art project from Mrs. Frobase, an art teacher from Pennsylvania. Hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to have your artwork uploaded to your Artsonia gallery. Welcome to the studio. Today we're going to be making pop art prints using jelly plates. So come on in, let's get started. The supplies you'll need to gather include a jelly printing plate, and if you don't have one of these, you can look up recipes to create your own. You'll need some neon paint. I used Crayola Premier Tempera paint. A brayer, which is a roller for applying your paint. Some scissors, paper, various texture tools, and you can find objects around your house, like plastic forks and toothbrushes to use. Uh, a black oil pastel and some black paint. Now you can use black tempera paint or you could also use a more permanent India ink if you're really careful. Now let's begin with the jelly plate and the neon tempera paints and the brayer. The first step of this project is going to be to create some layered prints. So we're going to create two layers, so a print on top of a print. For the first layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose two colors. I'm going to put them on opposite sides of my printing plate and I'm going to spread them out to create a really pretty blend of the colors. It's important to just use a little bit of paint. When you're doing two colors, you could blend each one, spread it out, and then just slowly start blending the second one into the other towards the middle, just very gently. Once you've covered it, apply your first sheet of paper, give it a good massage so that you can transfer all of the paint onto your paper and peel it off. I was purposeful in my color choices. I knew that I'd get a really pretty purple if I used the blue and the red. Clean up in between prints is really easy if you have some baby wipes. After you make a print, just take a baby wipe and wipe it down and continue printing. So now I'm going to move on to creating another layer on top of my first one. And I'm only going to choose one color this time because my focus is going to be on creating texture. Remember, a little paint goes a long way and be sure to spread it out evenly. Then take your tools you have for creating texture and drag them through the paint. Um, no worries, if you make a mistake, you can just take your roller and roll the paint right back over and try again. If you do like it, take your first print, lay it right on top, give it a good massage, get all of that next layer paint right on top, then peel it off and reveal your masterpiece. Then I'm just gonna take a baby wipe, clean it up, and I think I will make a few more prints.
that our prints are drying, we're going to move on to the next step. We're going to create some stencils or very simple shapes of some objects that you'd like to create on top of your prints. Just think of some of your favorite things. Maybe your favorite food is a good one, um, favorite animals, or even something really simple. I'm gonna use a cup to create a circle and a circle can be many different things. So that'll be an easy one. I'm also going to use some shapes like stars and hearts to create some stencils as well. And you might notice I'm not too concerned with erasing. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. We are gonna cut these out. And like I said, these will just be stencils or templates. So if they get extra lines or mistakes on them, it doesn't matter. It's not part of our final artwork. Um, I am also using a thicker paper, like an oak tag, um, but any kind of thicker paper or nice thick construction paper or drawing paper will work. Uh, you just don't want it to be too thin because it could tear when we use it as a stencil. So go ahead and cut out all your shapes that you made once you're finished drawing them. And then throw your scraps away and we're ready to move on. Then go ahead and take your dry prints, decide which one you're going to start with and which of your stencils you're going to use. I'm gonna start with my ice cream cone. You'll also need to get your black oil pastel and a paper towel. Once you've decided where you'd like to place it, you're going to hold it still and you're going to color from the stencil outward and onto your paper. So you wanna make sure that when you're doing this, you're coloring both on the stencil edge and on a little bit onto your print too. You don't wanna leave any gaps in between. Use your other hand to keep it still. Once you've filled it all in, you're gonna take your paper towel Kind of roll it up and spread out from the stencil out onto your paper outward. You're just blending it and softening that line. You can see the difference as I'm moving around. It gives it like a soft glow. Just be sure to keep it still with that other hand so none of the oil pastel gets underneath. And when you're finished, remove it. You should see like kind of looks like a silhouette. You can add details to your image if you'd like. I'm just gonna add details for my cone, uh, maybe a few sprinkles on my ice cream. And then I'm just gonna move on to some of my other prints. Now the last step is to create some splatters and texture or drips 
uh, with some really watered down black paint or like I said you could also use some India ink to give it a really dark rich color you just have to be careful because it is a permanent ink so I'm just going to practice on a scrap piece of paper with some of these tools that I have laying around sponges and forks and toothbrushes um, here's a little dropper and that way I can kind of get the feel for how it's going to come out and what I want to do to add one final touch of texture to my masterpiece <laughs> 